then from that moment on, I knew we spoke the same language. It doesn't matter if we had disagreements with any other, our drive to win, like we have to win. There's, there's no other option. Can't just because the ship's sinking, all of a sudden I'm gonna jump off and swim to another ship like that. You don't do that, right? If you can win championships in front of everybody, then you could miss the playoffs in front of everybody. My thing is really simple here is that, you know, I expect excellent work. We all do. So I don't care if you're here in the office at 6 a.m. and you leave at midnight. If the work that you do is average, then this is not the home for you. What's going on, guys? Alan F. Ready here. Beautiful Wednesday, keys to success day. We're dropping Kobe Bryant volume trace. So this one's going to be talking about basically updated versions now that Kobe has Kobe. Now that Kobe has entered the investment world and is just completely dominating it, I just want you guys understanding that you should be learning from the best people. That's probably one of the best advice I could give you if you guys are new to my channel or new to the type of content I put out. I simply just take everything I've learned in business life lessons and just implemented it for the basketball market, for the basketball industry. So here is, without further ado, Kobe Bryant's Key to Success Volume 3. If you don't know who Kobe is, 18-time All-Star, 5-time NBA champ, 4 times MVP, two finals MVP, just the list goes on. You guys are going to love this one. Let's take a look. All right, guys, this one is Elevate Others. Well, I mean, here, here's why practice was important to me. Not from the, just the standpoint that I enjoy playing. Like, I enjoy being there. Um, I enjoy getting better. But as a leader of a team, it's also your responsibility to elevate the rest of the guys. And... What people tend to get stuck on a lot is saying, okay, the way to make players better is to pass them the ball when they're open. That's a very trivial way to look at things. What you have to do is you have to get them emotionally to want to be better. You, want, you, you have to get them to an emotional space where they wake up every morning driven to be the best version of themselves. Right? And how do you do that? And in practice, for me, it was a chance to, to drive them, to challenge them, right? If they're, and, and this is where you have to know your teammates, because if it's late, we just had a back-to-back, -back and we had practice the next day, and you show up, and guys don't feel like going through the motions, don't feel like practicing, it's important to know each and every one of them individually, personally, because then you know what nerve to touch. Some guys, it's like, okay, come on, let's, you know, we can do this. That'll get them going. Other guys, no. You got to figure out what button to push. You know, Powell was always Spain. If I tell them how they lost in a gold medal to us and how they're going to lose again, how I'm going to beat your ass in practice just like I beat you in a gold medal game, oh, that, oh he would hate that. <laughs> He'd hate that. But that's what practice was. You have to drive them. You absolutely have to. And if practice is more intense and harder than a game seven will be, then a game seven will be easy. But if it's not, then that's when teams start folding and capitulating. So I think that's very important to really understand that in Kobe's mindset and also stuff that I've taken as part of my business model is to not let up because if I let up, then the people who are paying me, clients, not clients, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a paid client or not, just this idea that if I say it's okay to kind of take it easy, which to some people may have uh, kind of that Mamba mentality, but to others, I've met a wide spectrum of people in my life. And some people can really execute hard on the grind. And it just takes different reference points to really understand that. Trust me, guys, I went through the whole thing like, damn, that guy's just relentless, ruthless. And now that I run my own business, I'm not saying I'm that same level, but do the hours I put in into making content. Look, if you if no pain, no glory, right? No pain, no gain. I think some things that as you start becoming a business owner, decision maker, CEO of your own life, doesn't matter if you're working a job, doesn't matter if you're right still in school, you know, there's a level that you have to take things if you want to be excellent that I think you have to elevate yourself, not only yourself, but find people who elevate you. I think one of the best things that I've learned is to find people who elevate you. Another way to put it is I look for people who make me feel embarrassed. Like straight up, there's no other way putting it lightly. Like if I feel embarrassed, I get the emotional pain, spikes my determinism, I guess, to become better. That's it. 
and uh, yeah, just execute on that. The next one is be a champion. Uh, what it was like for you with all of the grit and all of the makeup that you had to be such a great competitor, what was it like for you to play with people that, that weren't as gritty as you were? How did you deal with that? Um, how, how did you set your expectations knowing that, that you were so far out there? Uh, and, and how did you deal with the players that you played with, you know, knowing that they, they were still kind of somewhere on the spectrum, but, uh, but you, were, you were on the top of it? Good question. It's a great question. Um, my response might sound a little um, tough, but I, I, I just, I'd kill him, I'd bury him. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, you know, tolerance for that and the, the kind of culture that the Laker organization stood for and winning championships is not tolerated. You're gonna show up to play and you're gonna lollygag through this scrimmage, through this drill. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to let you know I beat you. And I'm gonna want you to reconsider your professional life choice. <laughs> you know, and, and, and for the most part, you know, people will say, okay, that doesn't make a great teammate. Well, I'm not here to be a great teammate. I'm here to help you win championships. So there's a difference. Um, and, you know, fortunately for us and for me, you know, we had an organization that, you know, um, it was championships or nothing. And they were really good about identifying that and bringing players in here that had that competitive streak and, you know, getting rid of the ones that did not. If I got a fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. That's a problem. You want players that are gym rats, players that want to be in the gym, that want to work. And then from there, you build on top of that. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. You're going to make me feel dumber. You're going to, <laughs> you know, you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. <laughs> There's plenty of teams in here where you'll fit right in. <laughs> well, you mentioned... At the time, they were right down the hall from us. <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> They were. All right, guys, that is harsh. But look, let's be real here. I think as you guys want to improve... Like I said earlier, you want to find people who embarrass you. So, look, that's how Kobe says it. There's some people who maybe want to be nicer than that. But I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is, you know, at the end of the day, I find that most people are good people. And just that's just their way of operating of what has worked for them. And he finds no need to sugarcoat it. So I'm telling you guys, right, I was raised... Uh, like, you know, in a relatively, you could say, nice environment. I mean, yeah, there were struggles and stuff like that. But, dude, when I'm on the court and I take that and it bleeds into my bas into my business world, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> as Drake says, <laughs> the world is cutthroat. I'm not to blame, man. <laughs> I got the industry is cutthroat. Um, yeah, that's it, right? Like, if you guys want this, right, nothing is stopping you from making content like I'm making. Just it's like winners win, losers lose. If you resonate with being a loser and you get mad that I say that, then learn meditation, learn Eckhart Tolle, and and decide why am I getting offended by some guy on the internet calling me a loser? Um, and and it it does my subconscious resonate with being a loser? I think that's I have to go through that. I'm just telling you right up, straight up. Am I Alan F. Reddy, a loser or a winner? And then I went through the meditation process. I went through, you know, the seven stages of whatever. It's like, dude, like just decide, right? And I, I think I think right now the world is heading towards this idea that everyone should feel good about themselves. It's like, dude, use comparison game to your advantage, right? They're going to tell you, oh, don't compare yourself to others. Do what you got to do so that you can get buckets, right? That's it. So yeah, let's keep going. This one is expect excellence. Let's see what Kobe has to say. Have you noticed a moment where you're like, I can't uh, maybe, I can't be as intense as I was during sports. I can't demand people to be here till midnight or practice without a ball for three hours. Or, yeah, no, know, like listen, my, my thing is really simple here is that, you know, I expect excellent work. We all do. So I don't care if you're here in the office at 6 a.m., and you leave at midnight, if the work that you do is average, then this is not the home for you. Conversely, you cannot be in an office at all 
and have excellent work, this is the place for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care if you're here. You know, there's a lot of guys that get in the gym and work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard, but then they can't transition that to 730. <laughs> yeah, right. And so this is one of the things that I learned in the business world. And when I took my tenure in the consultant world, there was something that I learned was just literally all you have to do is just deliver value. So there was constructs in my old companies I worked for and then in the new client sites I've worked for. This idea that you have to be in the office is something that just didn't resonate with me. I want to be a free bird and just like fly around, right? So what that means is as I take it, as I listen to what Kobe has to say about it is, look, if you deliver value and people are willing to pay for it, then lose the constructs in your mind that like, I, I hope you guys really understand. I came from that world and then recognize that, look, you don't have to go into the office to make it. You don't have to, like, these are all things that were sold to you, right? Um, that the world has to be a certain way. And if you see people doing it, then hopefully that gives you insight that it's possible to not do it that way. So think differently, pull a Steve Jobs, pull a Kobe, right? If you guys are coming in, your shit sucks. Like, good luck when the recession happens. I promise you, I've spoken to my old bosses and they literally say, look, everything is a perceived value, right? First in, first out. Well, a lot of business owners operate that way, right? So if you think that you could just keep lollygagging and chilling when the recession hits, dude, I've been speaking to a lot of people working corporate because I already left. They're like, damn, X and Z got fired. X and Z left. My dad got fired. My mom got fired, right? And then you blame the business. You blame the economy. Like, dude, you need to audit yourself and be like, man, how can I protect myself? so that I can stay valuable, right? There will never be a time where you just coast. A lot of, I see a lot of people just coasting, right? I'm telling you, in my group, Digital Marketing Ballers, I am preparing the next round of basketball trainers to crush it and dominate it. And if you think that things are going fine, uh, watch as they will just take over your business or take over your perceived market. I'm just telling you, you should check that link out in the in the links below. Like dig digital marketing, the decentralization of businesses by not needing a physical space and the internet revolution that is happening is literally the craziest thing ever. And you better get into that space, like quickly. That's my best advice. So let's take a look at the next one. The next one is wanted the most. One thing what I loved about you as an 18 year old is, is you wanted it. A lot of guys on our team didn't want it, but right. you wanted it at, at a 18 year old. And that's why in the Utah game, everybody talks about those air balls. I wasn't mad at you. Look at Cody Bryant for three, another air ball. He shoots back to back air balls, jazz basketball. And that's why I was the first one to come grab you and say, hey, I know everybody's laughing and giggling out, but one day people will fear you mm -hmm. at the end of the game. So mm -hmm. I knew that about you as an 18-year-old. You know, it was... All right, guys. That was really cool hearing Shaq talk about his experience with Kobe. I think, look, something I've found fam familiar with my key success on Steph Curry is if you put the work in in the gym, whatever your gym is, right, whether it's at home, studying, uh, if you're in college, you spend time at the library or whatever you guys are learning at the TA office, whatever your current craft is right now, just fucking dominate it, dude. Just if you want to get all A's, go get all A's. Don't let anyone tell you it's okay to not do what is your standard, like hold your standard high. Okay. So in terms of basketball, in terms of business, like, dude, you want to get million dollar business revenue, go get it right? Like you will always be pinging other people to say like, is it okay for me to go chase my dreams to go chase a million dollars, whatever you want to do, right? Don't let anyone tell you not. That's probably the biggest thing that I've quote unquote held me back is just realizing that, look, if you want to go get it, go see what it's like, get that firsthand experience. And if it wasn't what you wanted, go get the next thing, right? You will always be able to move and change around. I will say that it it's probably, in my experience, been better to have passive revenue streams so I could go on this road trip I'm going on next week than to be stuck, in my opinion, in an office. And the financial jujitsu that I do in my mind telling me that this is what I want, at least I have first-hand experience, right? 
I know a lot of people have been pinging me. He's talking about quarter life crises. I'm only 28, but I'm saying it can happen to any of you guys. If you guys feel like you're stuck, it's not going to go away. What will get better is your rationalizations of why you couldn't go for it and just decide if you want to live with that or not. Right? So I'm going, I'm, I'm pushing hard, guys. I'm pushing the buttons hard for you guys. I hope you guys take this energy or whatever emotions you guys feel and learn to either one, recognize it and let it be aware of your ego consciousness and pull an Eckhart Tolle, get one with the present energy. Or, right, I, I'm bringing this in because that's what uh, Phil Jackson talked about in the mindful, you know, his Zen techniques. Or you guys end up hating me and I, uh, I'm fine with that too because at least it gives me insight into <laughs> people, right, or, or my haters because my haters will expose me. Right, that's what I want. I mean, to a degree, right? You have to understand my mindset. I want people to tell me my shit's broke so I can fix it. So yeah, that's that. The next one. Did I already want it the most? I, fuck. The next one. Focus on winning. I don't know about, well, maybe, maybe a little bit for you, but for me, being one of the best bigs in the league and having that title of not winning one. Mm-hmm. I think it took toll on both of us, you know. I wanted to get it, you wanted to get it. Well, I'm at a, a point in my life where individual islands don't mean much anymore. I'm just, you know, uh, more worried about what the team is capable of doing. Uh, I admit I was I was probably crazy. Well, I, we, we, we both weren't necessarily yeah, stable. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. I, I mean, my thing is I didn't want to, for us and for me, I didn't want to have that, have that title of, they ain't got one yet. Right. I remember one, one day reading it, reading it in, the, in the paper. Oh, Shaq's averaging twenty or thirty and doing this. And the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said, "Well, he didn't win none yet. Right. So is he great?" And that just kind of, that just kind of, yeah. You know. Well, I, 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 one thing that you know, um, I understood was your necessity to have to win one. There was a lot of pressure, and I think there was a lot of frustration because you kept seeing this kid. And everybody kept saying, okay, be patient with this kid, be patient with this kid. And you're saying, listen, I don't have patience. I have to win now. And this kid needs to develop now. I think I can remember the, the, the first time we had our first fight um, and you looked and said, okay, this is crazy. I did say that. Yeah, I did. Anyway, we were playing a pickup game. We were doing a lockout season, Southwest College, playing a pickup game. We we're on opposite teams. Right. And trash talking. Yes. And you kept saying, yeah, take that little Take that little I'm looking around. Oh, fucking me. Yes. <laughs> right? And yeah. I said, well, hold on. Ain't going to be too many more of those little, you know. Yeah, I remember that. And what'd you say? Well, what you going to do about it? Uh, well, what you going to do about it? And then that's the next thing I knew. I saw a big hand coming this way. And I remember going this way. <laughs> and I remember throwing some lollipop <laughs> golden Polynesian came and caught. <laughs> and then they all just kind of broke us apart, broke yeah. us up. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, man, he wants this thing. He's, it's, it's, it, it affects him, right? I mean, he, he's, it consumes him. And then from that moment on, I knew we spoke the same language. It doesn't matter if we had disagreements with any other, our drive to win, like we have to win. There's, there's no other option. Uh, we're gonna figure this out, we're gonna get this done. And, uh, and we did it. Portland has three timeouts left, the Lakers have two. Bryant, to shot! Yeah, so one of the coolest things is like as you go on your entrepreneur journey, on your hero's journey, on your business journey, whatever your guys' life goals are right now, I hope you guys realize that you know you got to find allies and partners who want to win just as much as you want to win. I think you have to be okay with having a little bit of selfish gene in you, Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Um, you know, every, in my opinion, for people I meet in life who are not on that same level frequency that I am, they'll t do whatever they have to do to make you feel bad for wanting it. Uh, they'll tell you, uh, oh, you, you don't have insight into the world or you don't like, Oh, you have poor, um, right. Like just, just understand that there's a good quote. It's like men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Right. So if you want to get buckets, go get buckets. That's why I focus on basketball, right? The scoreboard does not lie. Right. If if you if your measure of success is money, then go get money. 
right? Whatever it is that you think you need to be successful, go reach that. I think a lot of people sit on this idea like, oh man, I wish I had X, Y, Z, right? If it, it means go getting a girlfriend or go, you know, if you're a girl, go getting a boyfriend, then go talk to that guy, go talk to that girl, whatever is the success for you. Because in the end of the day, all you will have is your own memories of what you did and didn't do. And so please do not have the memories of regret of just wishing that you did something right instead of like having firsthand experience that is worth its weight in gold i promise you number six don't jump the ship i know it's it's good to say that you want to win the championship every yeah. year but it probably wasn't really a realistic one so how do you adjust how do you adjust as a team leader? Uh, and then how, uh, what conversations does ownership have with the coaches well, and teams about rebuilding? Jeannie, Jeannie um, is so sweet that she saw me work so hard for so many years. And the last few years, um, her and Rob, who was at the time my agent, um, called me and said, listen, we are so sorry for what happened to this team. We're sorry that we don't have... <laughs> Seriously, it's like we don't, we're sorry we don't have a team around you that can contend for a championship. I mean, you know, it's, it's um, so we can make a few calls and get you on a contending team uh, if that's something, because we just feel horrible about seeing you going out there and struggle. Remember this? And, and I sat there and I listened. I said, you know, we've known each other for a very long time. I'm, now I'm questioning myself because I'm wondering what about me makes you think I would jump ship? <laughs> We don't do that. I've been a Laker fan since you know, five years old. I, mean, I, can, I know the Laker history all the way from Minneapolis all, all the way to where it is today. Right? So it's in my blood. And, and this family, her father, um, um, believing in me and standing by me and all such stuff. Like, I, I'm not, not going to go anywhere. Like, this is home to me. You know, we work through this stuff together. And, like, you know, as a leader, you got to be able to take the good with the bad, man. You can't just, because the ship's sinking, all of a sudden I'm going to jump off and swim to another ship like that. You don't do that, right? If you can win championships in front of everybody, then you can miss the playoffs in front of everybody. You got to be able to take both sides of it. This is a big thing that I've been, you know, in my business experience really pondering about is like, dude, are you a quitter or not a quitter, right? So in my mind, I know that it's like, as soon as I listened to Tony Robbins and stuff like that, I was like, dude, I want to be like that guy. Like this guy is sending me a tape deck. I'm listening to my 88 Volvo, listening to ways I could improve my life, like hooked me early. And I was like, man, I must imagine the type of impact that he has right now. Like, hey, who else is listening to this guy? Uh, and then now I find patterns of people like that with Kobe, Steph Curry, Eddie Basketball, you know, even some of my clients, even I've even connected with life coaches as well. Um, and so look, if you're working corporate, right, and you guys are thinking like, man, I'm not a quitter, right? You got to do you, man. If, if you really think that you could do this YouTube thing or be a content creator or be, you know, run a business, then at least try, right? At least try. And if you find that, you know, your responsibilities in life come and you just got to make a decision, right? Like, there, I think there's a lot of good books out there that can give you plan Z options. Like, in my opinion, I would do Uber, I would do Lyft, I would do whatever it fucking takes. Because like, the true story, I, I was a consultant and I met an iOS consultant. He was developing Xamarin and he told me that in his consulting company, he didn't get paid on the bench. So if you guys aren't familiar with consulting, you... Go out and you consult with businesses. I did BI. He he was doing iOS. And in my company, I got paid bonus for being on a client site. So I got paid 50K, whether or not I'm on a client, and I was expected to learn while I was on the bench. His company, I don't know why I said it like that, his company did not pay. And he told me, dude, I'm fucking hustling. I am at work like eight to eight to eight to six, learning everything I can while I'm there. And to make ends meet, because I live here, I he lifted, like not <laughs> bench press. I mean, he's a pretty strong dude, but I'm talking about like L-Y-F-T. And he just, he was telling me how he would just work. Right? And I was just like, damn, I need to step up my game. Like when I talk about, when I say like I get inspired or I get embarrassed, it's like, he was like, damn, I need to step it up. Right? Because every time I get embarrassed, I that's a person in my mind. I'm like, I need to do it for them. And if this guy's hustling, I should be hustling too no excuses. So 
that is um, my two cents on <laughs> don't jump ship is like you got to figure out in your head if you're a quitter or not and then do whatever it takes. Um, you know, my best advice, don't quit on your dreams. Do not quit on your dreams. If you guys know what you want to do or if it's like a thing you can't get away from of like maybe I could, my life could be like this, just do it. Nike. All right, the last thing, the last one, love what you do. How would you explain that mindset of just trying to continuously improve? I enjoy what I do. You know, this is fun for me. You know, I, I, I truly love what I do. And I'm, that's where the passion comes from. That's where the will to get better comes from. It's just because I truly enjoy it. I enjoy the preparation. Your high school coach, Greg Donner, uh, it says that you might actually be a little embarrassed by how much you love basketball. Yeah. Is that true? Probably, yeah. I mean, it's, Why? it's like, well, I mean, it's like anything. You know, I, it's, I just so happen to be playing basketball. Like, if I was a computer um, kid, you know, in high school, people would have probably made fun of me. You know what I mean? And it just so happened to be basketball, what I'm passionate about. And, you know, my passion knows no bounds. But it embarrasses you? Well, I mean, it's just a little, a little weird, a little strange. I mean, when you're around, like in, in the Olympics, I'm around other athletes who kind of share that same, you know, that same mind, same mindset. It's, it's fun to be around them because we can have conversations about those things. All right, guys, that is it for Kobe Bryant, Volume Seven. So, I'm taking another experiment with this. Instead of doing two, I'm doing seven. Lucky number seven. I think that's enough for you guys to resonate with this content. Uh, but yeah, on that note, love what you do is like, man. I can't explain it. If you guys aren't loving every single moment of your day, then your shit's broke, right? As Gary V says that I've taken to my own persona, taken into my own consciousness. Uh, if you spend every day working nine to five and working for the weekends, or you take a CTO and then you dread going back to work after taking a CTO, like figure out something to do, right? Because you are going to spend 40 years of your life doing that thing. And if you really feel like you need to at least take a shot at being your own boss, which is not for everyone, right? Some people I've met, like, oh, I'm, uh, this, the funny thing is, is like aerospace engineers who work for SpaceX, because I went to Georgia Tech and I would talk to them and they were so fucking passionate. They're like, I want to learn the Bernoulli's principle. Do you know that in the helicopter, we don't actually fully know what happens at the very center of the vortex is what he was telling me. And he was very excited about it. And I was like, damn, I wish I had that when I was in biomed because I don't really, get, like I, I realized kind of quickly I didn't really want to be a doctor. And in my mind, I was like, damn, I want to be doing like that Tony Robbins shit. That's it, guys. Like now that I'm doing it, quote unquote, <laughs> making that YouTube content, it's... uh. You know, not taking it for granted. Do not take things for granted and love what you do, right? So every day is a gift, an opportunity for you guys to really execute on your hopes, dreams, visions, and goals. And also realize that, like, I, like this is my best advice to someone who's on the fence about starting is just do it as a side business, right? If you have a good job, but that job irks you, then do, like, in, instead of doing what society tells you like some people they really listen too much into what society says is the norm to do um like if you don't like partying and you don't like you know let's just know what you like doing like to me you could say that a lot of it came from the educational system and the structure but i actually found enjoyment and learning self-improvement like I, I would read physics books math books calculus but always i'd be like damn but i actually really like you know stuff like tony robbins and self-improvement and stuff like that. So, you know, that now I've just found a way to position myself from 10 years, years and years and years and years of doing it. And be like, well, I guess I'll try this YouTube content thing. And it's not really try. You have to understand my side business is blend logic. I did web designs. I've directed digital marketing for, you could call it fractional VP of marketing for some companies, advisors. Like, yeah, you, I, I've built multiple brands um, and it's not like I built it. It was like I consulted and advised on it. It's like, I might as well take my own advice. That's something I learned from one of my life coach uh, clients. It's like, it's very easy to give advice, very hard to take your own advice. And I recognize that I had my own biases of like, you know, what I could and couldn't do. And I always knew it was like, man, I should make my own personal brand. I should make my own content. Now it's just like no more procrastinating. So 
Kobe Bryant. If you guys want to get that Mamba mentality, you can check my Facebook link. It's Facebook group slash I am a baller or links up lenage.com slash I am a baller. I want to show you guys how to build the lifestyle of your dreams. Um, in it, everyone has their own levels of success. For me, it was traveling the world. I took one of those animal animal tests, animal spirituality. Uh, one, because my client was talking about it, spirit animals. So I took that test, said I'm a bird. Probably influenced from, <laughs> from Forrest Gump when uh, Jenny prays to be a bird so he could fly, 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 fly away. Um, yeah, I just like it. I get, I'm going on a road trip back to San Diego. I like the idea that I can make content anywhere, that I can provide value anywhere. It's something that I just enjoy doing. I've been able to, been blessed to have the corporate experience where my bosses understood that that's what I like doing and they had the option for me to telecommute. And in it, it's not that I didn't appreciate the company that I worked for, but I still recognize that you know, there was still a part of me that was like, maybe I, sh I should build my own company. And yeah, if you guys are anyone interested in being a quote unquote baller, whether it's getting cash, whether it's getting better at basketball, whether it's, I don't know, talking to that chick, talking to that dude, that's what I'm, <laughs> to be a true baller, shot caller, that's what it you could get in the link below. I share free training, hours long video. Um, I use my iPad, my one notes to draw on the screen, provide lots of content. And if you guys are interested in the shortcuts, I have a PDF four page training, Jordan Lawley, I love basketball TV, elite guard training. And then one, the intro video is the fundamentals of marketing. Everything I learned from my mentors, business teachers that like this guy right here, I read this book almost every day, Sam Walton, um, notes on that concepts on that Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett. Uh, you know, I, I take, I have a lot of mentors ones that are like real life mentors like my business partners and ones that are people i just read about that i've never met right like michelle obama's book becoming michael jordan's book the life by lasby all this stuff i've spent a lot of years learning um and then also i've connected with a lot of business owners in the basketball space who have provided me their insights on how they run and you know helped me set up systems to scale to be able to do the stuff that you guys have been watching I break it down for you guys. So if you guys want to join that, that's links.blendlodge.com slash shortcuts. That's going to be in the link below. And yeah, guys, keys to success. Major key. DJ Khaled. It's what you guys need. I think this is what the world needs. Is someone to push, set the pace, keep the dribble alive, uh, keep hooping, be about that ball lifestyle. You could be a baller. Anyone could be a baller. Anyone could be a lethal three-point shooter, 94 feet a game. You just got to put in the work and believe if I could do it at like 24 and four years, work on my craft, work on my shot, completely change my life, 360 with the wrist boy, <laughs> you can do it too. Um, so that's why I make my content. That's why I do the stuff I do. If any of this resonates with you, send me a DM uh, or reach out to my sales team, sales at Bun Logic, info at Bun Logic. You be my co-founder if you want to. He has his own email address too. You can check us out. Peace and love, guys. Alnef Ready from Blend Logic. See you guys in the next one.